Yo, what's good everybody? It's your boy XC. Welcome back to the channel. So if you found my channel at around 3,000 subs, you probably remember I had a video about Dream being exposed for cheating. If you haven't already seen it, I'll go ahead and play a segment for you. But here's the thing about Dream. He got a whopping 42 Ender Pearls out of 263 trades. Now from looking at just those numbers, you're probably like, XC, those are not much different. But when you do the math, it actually comes out to a 0 0.0000000000565% chance of happening. This was around five months ago and I never really planned to make a follow-up video to this video. What really ended up happening is Dream got a few professors to redo the math for him and basically they had come to the conclusion that the numbers were significantly wrong and they also came to the conclusion that Dream's numbers as they were extremely rare and it was a very small chance of happening that it was actually possible. So that's what I really took as like the ending of the entire situation. I doubted I'd have to make another video on the situation. Well here we are five months later we have some new information coming from the man himself dream. Now before we dive into that, if you guys do leave a like and subscribe on the channel, then you will wake up tomorrow with a lifetime supply of Blue Jolly Ranchers on your front porch. Now I know that sounds really hard to believe, but bro, I don't make the rules, so uh, I want to take the chances. Now with all that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at this, shall we? Now around 7 this morning, Dream posted a tweet that said about speedrunning with a pace spin link attached to it. So as we click on the pace spin link, we see that he has an entire run through of the entire situation and where he's standed on pretty much every single part of it. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Also, keep in mind that I'm going to be reading the full text so you guys can get all the information that you came to this video for. So yeah, just fair warning that it is going to be a lot. So, you know, just sit back, relax, grab yourself some popcorn and uh, let's get into it. I feel like this is something important to talk about. I've been very withheld for a while about it all and just decided it'd probably be best to let it out so I can feel relaxed a little more, I guess. This will be a very long read, I'm sure. I'm running this in my bath at 4 a.m. on my phone, so forgive any mistakes or confusing bits. Back in October, November of 2020, I, for the first time since when 1.6 had been released, I decided to try and speed run 1.16 to get a decent time. My goal was to get a time faster than 25 minutes, which was a good time and fairly obtainable at the time for me without spending months of speed running. We had or were just about to switch to manhunt to 1.16 and I wanted to get a practice for that and then speed run for a better 1.15 time because my record on 1.15 had been beaten. After running for about a week, I got a 19 minute time that arguably could have been lower. Ironically enough, due to bad luck, I started running 1.15 directly after and a few days Days later, there were some suspicions involving my streamed runs on 1.16. At this point, I was cooperative, but upset and confused that I was being questioned. I provided all the information that I could and assumed that everything was fine. As chatter grew, I was confused and the numbers didn't look to be in my favor. At this point, I reached out to the only Mojang developer that I had contact with and talked for about an hour or so about what was going on. I told him the details and was asking if there was potential for a bug or glitch and he told me that there wasn't, but said some things about how banning for luck seems far-fetched and that they should improve their system. I definitely see where they're coming from when they're saying banning for luck seems a bit far-fetched, but the issue with this, if I remember correctly, it came out to 1 in 177 billion, and I mean, to put that in perspective, the odds from being struck by lightning in your lifetime is 1 out of 15,000, so you have to be struck by lightning at least a thousand times to even get close to that percentage. I felt a little reassured, but also angry that I was potentially being dragged for absolutely nothing. It wasn't a huge thing yet, but it still lingered in my mind, and I couldn't really think about anything other than it. As time went on, and many weeks passed, I grew more and more frustrated, convinced that I was being targeted due to the fact that I was a YouTuber and a couple of mods self-admitted didn't like me at all and didn't have many kind words to say. I was an asshole and I lashed out publicly saying that the investigation was a farce and expressing how pissed I was that I was being targeted and that it was taking so long as the mods kept giving me deadlines and then missing them. This was a terribly stupid thing of me to do. I was scared and stressed and did shitty things. I regretted a lot and really wished that I had been able to keep my calm. So yeah, I could definitely respect him for this one, really owning up to his actions. When someone's in a situation like that, it's kind of their instinct to defend themselves. So it does make sense why he did all that stuff. However, I do agree with him that it is better to keep your calm in this kind of situation. But we can definitely see why somebody would get angry in this situation when they feel like they're innocent. Later that month, the speedrun team released a video and a document detailing why my 1.16 runs couldn't have been legitimate based on math and statistics. I admittedly don't know shit about math and statistics. I didn't go to college and I hated math my whole life. At at this point, I felt complete fear as I felt like I had been publicly smeared in a way that I had no clue how to respond to. I didn't understand the math and I didn't understand why I had been left in the dark for so long only to have a video dropped randomly on me right before MCC. At this point, I had multiple speedrun moderators messaging me scary things about how it was a shit show and no one could agree on things just before the release, that they were clearly biased against me and so on. Again, I lashed out, I tweeted about the mods being clout chasers and said a lot of really dicky things. 
things. I was pissed. I was scared. I was being an idiot. So again, we can respect Dream for coming out and owning up to his actions because to be quite frank, most people can't really do that these days. So yeah, just big props to Dream for having the willpower to do that. Shortly after that, someone gave me the idea to hire a professional statistician because I know nothing about math. This calmed me down a lot and it brought me back to a much healthier mindset. I googled and I ended up finding two professors and I emailed them both about the situation asking for assistance. Only one of them was able to help. I was looking for help. I told them that I didn't cheat. I just needed a second opinion on the math. Eventually, the professor came back with a conclusion that the mod numbers were off by a significant, significant margin and that it's possible, although extremely unlikely. Again, not completely understanding the math, but knowing that my expert's opinion seemed to be that the mods were off, I felt vindicated and relieved. I made a video about it and expressed the professor's views. People hounded me for it, saying that the astrophysicist was fake but the mods confirmed it was legit. I just wanted a mostly unbiased party's opinion. The mods came back with a response, correcting the professor and saying that he was off, providing reasons for why. Again, I don't understand the complicated math, so I sent it directly to the professor asking for his thoughts. Later on, he came back admitting that there were mistakes in his original assessment, although he still believed theirs was off. In his rebuttal, he came to the conclusion that it's improbable that I didn't cheat. I felt like the right thing to do was to post his findings, even though he hadn't asked me to do it yet. I tweeted them out and replied saying, Saying that I agree that it seems more likely than not that I cheated. I didn't say anything more than that. Funnily enough, he actually emailed me a day or two later saying that I need to post his feelings or he will, and I responded that I already had before he even asked. At this point, I was lost. I was fairly confused about the whole thing, wondering what the other options were and exploring the possibilities. As much as I was confident that I didn't cheat, I had never explored the option that I possibly did, Due to the way I reacted to the mods and perceiving everything was going on, I was convinced that they were out to get me. I tunnel vision and I was paranoid and I didn't think straight. I had plenty of valid reasons to believe that they weren't impartial and had the mod team and I been completely friendly from the beginning, I believe it never would have gotten to the point that it did. So that was all the past information that we had already known about. Now we're actually getting to the new information. After considering this, I ended up finding out that I had actually been using a disallowed modification during six of my live streams on Twitch. At the time, we were just starting to record videos on one. 16 and we had just hired a developer to help us with coding mods for videos because me and George had no experience with mods, only plugins. One of the mods that they were working on was an overall recording mod that I have used in every video with updates and improvements since around the speedrun controversy. You may notice it in my videos due to F3 being small or particles being reduced or recently on my streams things like the background being custom or a dream servers option and plenty of other features and improvements. In our challenge videos before 1.16 we have always increased the Enderman spawn rates and the pearl drops rates out of convenience and we've mentioned that openly before. It makes the videos better because we don't spend hours looking for pearls or spend so much time farming blaze rods. When 1.16 came out it was more complicated to increase piglin trades than it is to do enderman pearl drops. A server side plugin was made for our videos that slightly increases the rates. Around this time when the first versions of the recording mod was being made, although it was made for a chat mod at this point. I considered at the time that this potentially could have been a problem, but brushed it off because number one, server side and client side are completely different, and as far as I was aware, nothing had been done to client side. Number two, as far as I knew it, it was basically just a chat mod so far, and number three, I was 99% sure that I didn't even have the recording mod on, which was backed up by the Fabric API log saying that only the Fabric API was loaded. Although I found out later that it only lists things that explicitly asked to be lists, which I had no idea. This was mentioned in my response video. I ended up thinking that it's basically the only explanation after the professor came back with what he did. I talked with a developer and ended up finding out that when working with the mod stuff, he had the same improvements from our challenge servers to the client side mods so that they would work in single player videos for like the shot caller video or the other single player mod videos. This was only an early redemption of the mod and was removed because a developer realized that those types of videos can just be done on a PC hosted server. This actually included a couple of other things that weren't mentioned at all during the controversy, much as far as I'm aware. Ender Eyes had a low chance of breaking when thrown. The Enderman dropped pearls had a much higher percentage. I don't think I killed any Enderman in this, so it wasn't noticeable, similar to the eyes. When I realized this, I felt an extreme sense of guilt. I took down my response video, not believing in what I said in the video at all anymore. This was a couple months ago at this point, I believe. When the drama first started, I cared more about defending myself and being in the right then about figuring out what was actually going on. I shot myself in the foot by doing it. So this really brings me back to earlier where you could definitely see why he would want to defend himself in a situation like this. 
I felt really terrible for the mods because I dragged them through the mud even though they were mostly right. I still feel as though the mod team was extremely unprofessional when dealing with it, but they're a group of volunteers just trying to do their job and in their eyes I was some cheating sob YouTuber who didn't care at all. Maybe in their position I would have treated me the same, I was an asshole back to them which didn't help at all either. When I got into speedrunning, I was doing it every day for months and you can see the skill improvement even just over a few months of tryharding. It was so much fun and I got a few snarky records that I shouldn't have gotten in the first place. I came in at the right time and met some absolutely incredible people who are some of the best Minecraft players on the planet. I am nowhere near the best speedrunner I never have been. I was in the right place at the right time and was able to have a lot of fun because of that. I hope this gives insight to my mindset a little bit, but if not, I'm not sure what will. I'm sure I'll talk about it more just for clarity's sake, but I want to avoid causing more drama. Please don't send any hate to the mod team or anyone involved in the situation. I don't want any more drama at all. You're no supporter of mine if you do. Holy crap, that was a lot to read. So if that was a little bit confusing for you guys, basically he admitted to using a mod which he hadn't realized he was using to greater his odds in a speedrunning situation. This was for his manhunt videos that he had already admitted to making the odds greater for him to make it more entertaining. I feel like before all of this drama really circulated, he should have really checked his mods folder or just checked with the developers of the mod like he did later on. By doing that, we could have avoided a lot of the drama that ended up happening. At this point, I do think we should forgive him because he has owned up to his actions. Kind of sucks that took him seven months to do so but overall he has owned up to his actions now we can definitely see where somebody in this situation would like to defend themselves instead of trying to figure out what actually happened but yeah i think that's where i'm gonna go ahead and end out the video if you guys did enjoy today's video then please be sure to leave a like and subscribe and comment down below your opinion on the entire situation and with all that being said thank you all for watching today i'll catch you all later peace I smoke a day after church service, holy smokes Then comatose, felt like I caught the Holy Ghost Overdose off shrooms while playing overdose I know the ropes, I navigate like the older folks Coast to coast like Lonzo Ball Pockets large but the combo small They say less